What's up, everybody? Lou Vegas Superhome, your superhome.com. Hey, I wanted to do a video about artificial intelligence or AI in real estate. I can imagine real estate agents using ChatGPT, for example, to write a listing description or something like that. But I think we're really missing the mark here with how valuable AI is in the real estate space and how it can be used to really supercharge pretty much all of your processes from marketing to developing new concepts to coaching even. So let's go ahead and move forward. All right, so the first thing I want to start with today is like marketing and automation. So let's say you're a real estate agent, for example, and you have your own personalized website, which is great. And you have a form on your website in case you have a, a buyer or seller kind of interested in selling or, or buying a home. And you need that information, kind of that intake. Maybe you have uh, some pre-qualifying questions. Are they approved already for a, lo a loan or a mortgage? Um, some of those things you want to qualify them with. And that information usually will come into your email and that's a lead for you, right? Well, what happens then is probably just sitting in your email and you're probably just calling them right from your email. Well, that's not really an effective way to manage that data. It's not going into a system where you can manage it later. And it's not using the power of AI to help either draft responses based on those qualifying people or maybe even qualify them for you. So let's take a quick look at um, one example of how you can um, use AI in your marketing efforts to kind of streamline your, your business a little bit. So let's jump right in. So I wanted to... Uh, to use this tool. So this is called make.com. And what make.com is, it's similar to Zapier. I mean, you maybe heard of the Zapier um, platform, which is basically a tool that allows you to automate certain tasks between apps. If this happens, then this happens. And so make.com is just another one of those uh, examples. And um, it allows you to connect applications together. So when something happens, you can have the data, you know, run through a filter of some kind and then get sent somewhere else. In this scenario, I have it watching my email. So whenever I get a form filled out, what happens is make.com will look at this data from a specific place I have my forms coming in on my website, right? It will take that from my Gmail account. It will send it over to uh, ChatGPT, which is this module here. And it will look at the information that was sent through the form. I have it, uh, so a bunch of prompts here and information that I wanted to kind of analyze. And I want uh, ChatGPT to kind of use as a baseline as it's analyzing what came from the form. So I have some stuff here. Here's a like an example. Thanks so much for reaching out regarding your smart lock and security needs. So it's automatically looking at the form information and then drafting a email that's going to be similar to this. This is why I have it as kind of this text uh, system content. I want it to write something similar to this. And it's been working out really great. Now, I what I don't want is I don't want make.com to automatically send this email out. Can it do that? Yes. You might think, oh my God, that's great. I don't even have to send the email. That's going to save me so much time. I would probably advise taking a step back against that because chat, although ChatGPT and, and AI models are really helpful and really smart and can do a lot of different things. They may not always have the tone exactly the way that you want it. Um, the format even of the email might not be exactly the way you want it every single time. It does have some kind of points of error where it may make a mistake. So I recommend just having it write the email for you. And then let's show you what we're going to do here which is this kind of waits a little bit, which I, I was having, I was testing, sending it immediately. So technically this sleep tool here is just a waiting period. So what this does is once it comes in and AI does this thing, it hits this one. When it hits this one, it's, I can tell it to wait one minute, two minutes, seconds, whatever I want before moving on to the next step. So that's what I have this tool here for. So this waits like a minute and then it drafts an email, uh, two minutes rather, 160, 120 seconds. And then it drafts an email based on the information. So what what I have here now, this may look complicated. It can, you know, take some time to kind of understand how this works. But once you do once or one or two, you kind of understand the flow and then how to do it from there. So what I have here is I have it sending the information to drafts, if you can see that here. And then I have what email we're going to reply to. So it's going to take the reply to email from my Gmail over here. Then the subject is just going to be regarding your security needs, right? You can even customize that a little further. And then below here, we have the content. So it's looking at my message content as the source to uh, the message content from ChatGPT to create the email with. So this, these green ones here are actually the ChatGPT data. So it's come from here, this little blinking one. If you see, I hover over it kind of blinks on the left here. So 
it's taking this content from ChatGPT and it's putting it in a new email. And then from here, it basically just goes into a draft. There's no other steps after this and it saves it in my email. So let's uh, watch this in play here. So I, what I did was I unlinked uh, this sleeping tool because I don't need it to wait two minutes, right? You can uh, easily unlink something by clicking this little wrench and unlinking it. So I unlinked it from both sides and move it out of the way because I want this to happen in real time. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to do choose where to start from now on because I want to show you a demo from now on. I don't want it to look at a previous submission and then um, use that data. I want to use the one I'm going to show you right now. All right. So I go to my website here. I'm going to build my system. I'm going to go to my alarm system. Alarm system, no cameras. Maybe I want a home security system. Go here, I'm protecting three doors and windows. I want two cameras on the outside. I want um, one on the inside, protecting my home. I want smart locks. And uh, best is text me. I'm going to fill out this information John Doe, um, Lewis. Uh, let's do my email address. Okay, two one five 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 one two one two, and we'll do one two three Main Street and testing automation. All right, so now this is somebody just random on my website filling out a form. So we're going to go ahead and submit that. It was submitted successfully. Now this is a form I have somewhere else that our automation tool is looking for. Right. So now we're going to hit this here. I want it to run. I know that the email just came in. Here goes the number one. It populated. It sent it to ChatGPT. ChatGPT already wrote the summary for me. You can see that we have a number one here, and it already wrote a draft. It's already done. That happened instantaneously. Okay. So let's take a quick look. So first thing we have here, we have a new alarm form submission. Let's look at the text content here. Here's all the information I put in. John Doe, one two three Main Street with testing automation. Okay. And ChatGPT took all that information in. All right, and use this all of the the guidelines and everything that I gave it um, to to write a new email. And then we go to our draft here, and let's take a look at what it gave us here. If I click on the little one, let's look at the content. Look, hey, remember the name was John Doe. Thank you for your interest in our smart home security solutions. Appreciate your inquiry. If further assist you, um, we recommend scheduling a call. Now that is what I uh, asked it to do. So. I asked, I want you to encourage that they book a call with me because it's better for me to customize my solutions that way. And so that's what it did. And it recommends scheduling a call with one of our experts. Here's the link. It did include some of this like um, HTML. Uh, we're going to take a look at it and make sure and see what it did here. Cause this is some, this is again, one of the reasons why you don't want your AI to automatically, um, you know, send out emails because you don't always know what it's going to do. So it did include some of this HTML, which is a hyperlink for my schedule call link, which, you know, obviously we don't really want that to show up. We just want, um, the, the URL, but let's see how it performs. We look forward to connecting with you and addressing your requirements. Super home team. Okay. Very clean, short email. That's the instructions I gave it. So let's go in here and go to our drafts. So we have our email here. Look what it says. Hey, John, thank you for your interest in our smart home security services. We really appreciate your inquiry to further assist you. We recommend scheduling a call with one of our smart home experts. Now, could I have, you know, provided a quote? Could I have provided, you know, more information, a link to a video, anything I really want, I could have prompted it to do and it would have wrote, wrote it here. Now, one of the other concerns we were talking about was that um, hyperlink URL uh, HTML code that it included inside of the email. But if you notice, all it did was use that code, the email, Gmail itself, use that code to create this blue hyperlink. You didn't have to highlight text, go down here, Pick a link, go and copy paste it from somewhere. It did it for you. This is what we're trying to um, convey here is that using AI, you're able to streamline processes that otherwise would have taken you time. Now, if you get, you know, 10, 15 leads a week, maybe you get 15 leads a day and, and you want to respond to everybody's email or you want to respond to everybody's text, or whatever it might be, um, you don't have that kind of time, right? You, you're, you're, idea is here is, is to, to qualify these people as fast as possible and get some contact to them because if you don't respond to them right away they're going to go and talk to somebody else so the idea is speed efficiency now in this case we did an email we could put logic in between where in here for example where if um instead of uh, once the you know form comes in uh 
ChatGPT could do its thing and and you know craft a nice little message, but then I can add like a filter in here. For example, it says, you know, if um, if it's a text, if they want text as their primary contact method, then I want you to go down this way and I want you to use a different tool to text them. But if they said I want to be emailed, it will go down a different filter and email them instead. So as you can see, like you can get really complex or you can do things very simple like this. I mean, how much time would it save you to automatically have these emails drafted? I can just go in here, make a couple adjustments and automatically have a an email drafted for me that I didn't have to write. And I can just review it and hit send and that's it. And I can reply. If um, if this was helpful, I'm glad. I'm, again, I'm just trying to do a little bit more uh, AI technology in real estate to try to help you know, fellow real estate investors, property owners, um, use technology better um, so that we can kind of streamline our processes and, and um, you know, become more efficient in our business. So hopefully uh, that was helpful to you guys. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Lou Vega from Superhome, yoursuperhome.com, and we'll catch you on the next one.